we last week we learned a, what correlation was and that remember it's just that there's a relationship between two values now we're going to interpret this number we've been given this value r what does it really mean and how do we use it and where why should we be cautious of when to use it so one of the big problems with um, correlation is outliers now if we look at this area here we see this box this box has zero correlation but because we have this one point way up here we actually have a positive correlation of 0 0.880 because this outlier has brought the values you know more in line and we can draw a straight line now between them and we have correlation if we didn't have that outlier we would have zero correlation so that's something you have to look out for is do you have an outlier and uh, you can't just take it out you have to actually study to make sure that it was an outlier see that things weren't put in improperly you know you may instead of removing it we may correct make the correction so those are things we have to look for um, and here they're saying if we were to cover this get rid of this point we would say that see the correlation is gone and there's in fact zero correlation so here's the example they talk about mast correlation and we did a study uh, with women and bicycling and um, how much um, they ate over a two week period they can they we asked them to calculate um, how much time she spent cycling and what she ate so that way we could figure out calories so here is the graph of that information and notice we have these two possible points which may be outliers while this looks very strong these two outliers have basically removed all correlation and we have an R of 0.374 which is a very low positive correlation well if we were to remove them maybe this would go higher but we can't just remove them because we don't know what whether or not they're correct or um, they've been inputted incorrectly. I mean, notice here we have this woman who bicycle, bicycled about a little more than a half hour, but ate 3,000 calories. And this woman who bicycled almost two and a half hours, but only ate about 1,200 calories. You know, those were probably may have been errors somehow. You know, this may have supposed to have been 2,100 hour uh, calories, and then maybe this was instead of half an hour was supposed to be three hours. You know, she instead of putting you know. Uh, three hours she typed in 30 minutes she put the three in the wrong spot we don't know so we can't just remove them but we would test it to see what would happens and um, so that's one thing is outliers that we have to look at another thing is that maybe there is two groups of information that we're looking at and this here is uh, we're looking at hours that students watch television and their GPA and notice that you know it kind of goes down and it kind of goes up well what they're saying is that and because we have no correlation because these are both you know we actually have a negative point zero six three very low close to zero correlation well if these were in fact two different groups and we find out that they are uh, one group was actually watching educational television and the other group was watching you know all the rest of the stuff on television what happens so we divide them and here's the now the new graphs of data that we have are two groups where we have educational television and regular television and we were to graph these and notice now educational television has a very high positive correlation of 0.855 so the more hours they spent watching educational um, television, the higher their GPA went. And everybody who watched regular TV, they have a negative 0.951 correlation. So the more hours of regular television they watched, the worse they did on their GPA. Okay. Well, it kind of makes sense that people who are watching educational programs are, are lear still learning something. It's a science show or a history show. Um, they're learning to read. Maybe it's Sesame Street. They're they're learning stuff. Whereas people who are watching uh, the Housewives of Beverly Hills are learning nothing and are actually getting dumber. And so that's um, they're taking away 
knowledge. <laughs> and so that's what happens. You know, so we may have two subgroups where we, we put them together, we get a very low correlation, but if we take them apart and want to realize it, the correlations go up. The opposite can also happen. We can have here we have a, a fake study of um, weights of cars and prices of cars. Well, we have our heavy cars and we have our light cars. And when we graph them together, we find that there is a very high correlation, 9.949. Remember, correlation has to be between 0 and 1, so 0.949. Okay, very high positive relationship. However, if we were to break them out, we find out there's no relation, correlation in either group. The light cars have a 0 0.019 correlation. And the heavy cars have a negative 0 0.022 correlation. So when we separate the groups apart, we find virtually zero correlation in these groups. But when they were put together, um, the correlation is very strong. So those are things we have to look at. You know, do we have these groups, and should we take them apart and study them? Or and when we because you know, they don't really make any sense. Notice there's nothing here in the middle. So it does make sense to look at these cars, groups of cars individually, and see what's happening. When we saw those two classes, we saw that they were making an X. Maybe something was causing that X. We want to look at those values. So if we were to do a study and we had males and males grouped together, we might get certain results. Whereas then we separate them to see what happens, we get different results. So those are the kinds of things that we want to look at. Um, other things to think about. Correlation is not causality. Okay, Just because um, there is a high correlation doesn't mean one thing caused the other. And there's reasons that we have to remember this. They may be a coincidence. They could be going together in the same thing. In the book they talk about um, stock markets and um, prices and who wins the Super Bowl? Well, those things are obviously not related, but there was a study and they looked at it and that as one group of teams was winning the Super Bowl, the stock market would go up. And when the other team won the Super Bowl, the stock market went down. Well, obviously, who wins the Super Bowl doesn't have any you know, real uh, information on that, on the influence on the stock prices. So that's a coincidence. Um, they might both be caused by a third thing. So let's say, um, oh, uh, your electric uh, price, your your the cost of your electric bill, and um, the amount of hours you run your heat. Well, those, you know, as you go up, you run your heat, you know, the electric bill probably goes up, but they're probably more in tune with the seasons. Because if you have gas heat and you have an electric bill, they're not related. You know, your 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 more times you heat with gas doesn't mean you're going to use more electricity, but you tend to use more heat in the winter time when it's darker. So therefore, it's darker earlier, so therefore you're turning your lights on earlier. And so you're spending, and you have Christmas in those winter seasons. So you have more things that you're lighting. So therefore, your electricity bill is going up, as well as the heat because it's cold. So those are things that are. There's a third thing that's influencing both of them. And the re third reason we can't explain causality is because we may have it backwards. We may look at weight as the dependent variable and height as the independent variable and realize that and go oh yeah there's a positive correlation so the more you weigh that taller you are well it's really the other way around the taller you are the more you tend to weigh because there's more height structure so there's more bones there's more muscle there's for there's more of you going up therefore there's more of you getting heavier so do you have to make sure that you don't have them backwards. So that's why we can't say that just because there's correlation, there's causality. So these are the three reasons that you have to look at. Now, just because we've said all these bad things doesn't mean that correlation is bad. Correlation is actually very good. <laughs> uh, we just have to make sure that we look at outliers and we look at inappropriate groupings, um, that we're not just trying to find, um, that we don't have causality. But it's very useful in uh, studies of um, 
medicine and meteorology and research and business and economics and so these things all look to correlation and say you know is there something there is there a relationship once we find a relationship we could dig deeper to find out well what causes the relationship but we, if there's no strong relationship then it's not necessarily something we're going to study once we find that there's correlation we get, we dig deeper to do other tests to see what is really happening so High correlation is very important because we want to look deeper into it, but we don't just assume that once we see correlation that we have causality. That's the thing. You want to look further into your information. And that's all of six point, uh, sorry, 7.2, and I'll be back with you in 7.3.